Hello everyone, this is Campbell, aka SJ Thunder Warrior, and we are going to take a look at a book today. And this is a book that I've had for a long time, and it's actually a book that is both, well, I'm going to say it's a great book. It's a great book, but not for great reasons. Um, and I'm talking about Rifts Africa. Okay, so here we are. Rifts Africa. We, you know what? I'm just going to go through this. I made some notes, and I'm just going to share with you my notes, you know, looking at this and reflecting upon it about uh, a good, like, 20, 25 years down the line, and just kind of realizing, A, how poorly written this was, even for its own time, and B, uh, kind of just how much denial I was in, in the process. So um, let's get started and open this thing up. Okay, so we have the usual warning, violence and supernatural, and then there's some words without about, about Africa, where uh, Kevin Sambita uh, goes and says how big and massive and complex Africa is, and I'm and at first that made me think, yes, not everybody is the same. Not everyone, not all Africans are the same. This was really cool. And then I got a little bit concerned where he said, um, you know, really important research was done by Marianne uh, Zambita, his wife, um, and all of the photographs that she took. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but then they did have a really great list of resources, which actually weren't all that bad for the time. But despite all these these complexities that he talks about and all these resources, um, when we get into it, you're going to see that none of that really shows up. So let's take a look. All right, table of contents. I'm just looking over this. I'm like, okay, letters from Aaron Tarn. Um, Aaron Tarn is kind of the the narrator of the Rifts universe, kind of like the the historian and explorer that tells about different places. Um, so that's not. That doesn't seem too bad. Oh, then it goes right into the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, okay. We have Gods of the Nile, uh, Gods of Darkness, Gods of Light. Hmm. I may be mistaken, but the Pantheon didn't really work like that. Um, got Phoenixi, Ramen. Okay, the work, Mystic World of Africa, the Witch, Witch Villain. Okay, that's a little interesting. Okay, they have OCCs, of course. Um, oh, okay, let's see. All right, Rifts Africa, North Africa, wow. We're starting to talk about the actual place at page 108, actually, sorry, 109 out of a 160-page book. So think about that for a second. I'm not actually talking about the actual geography of a place until page 108, 160-page book. Okay, I'm just look down. Oh, pygmy hunter, pygmies. Wait a minute. Pygmy hunter, pygmy shaman as a RCC. Um, okay, so for if you don't know, RCC stands for racial character class, um, and it's usually been reserved for for characters that are literally like not human, like like dragons, because you can't play a dragon in this. Um, Okay, this is, this is really problematic. All right. And then here's where... So this is, like, actually not terrible as an introduction, but what kind of happens after, it just kind of goes downhill from here. Um, so these are the letters from Aaron Tarn, and all this describes things that are going on in the, in the beginning, this, like, gathering of heroes. But throughout this whole section there is just a huge crusader vibes and even though they say that they are in north africa after coming from england and going through europe um they there's no mention of any like like there's no africans yet it's like they have top out people coming from all over europe and i think even like people from north america like the knights of camelots were there um 
and all of these like you know ancient chenku dragons that have been on earth in hiding forever are coming for this great gathering um but still no no one from africa is in this and this goes on for a bit okay and then you know so you might think okay so okay we're gonna go on and now we're gonna talk about africa now right no we got these guys the four horsemen of the apocalypse so 25 pages four monsters and their mounts and these guys just have ridiculously huge stat blocks which is okay but guess what there's no story there's no reason for them being there's no real logic um there's what are their motivations what are their activities why are they all in africa not in like atlantis or mystic china or anything like that just really shoehorned in um there's no real point to any of this um and like you know okay so death is pretty interesting a little bit interesting he won't kill you he can't like kill you unless you attack him first all that kind of stuff i mean the the artwork is great i just kind of feel like to be honest if i was kevin long i'd be kind of a little annoyed that my ideas my work were just kind of like shoved in here and not given a really full story um and i'm just thinking like okay cool whatever it's 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 rifts there's always uh, these huge stat block things but then there's also like a like a some pictures like this and i'm i'm thinking when i saw this i was like oh great cool so this is um the samus power armor um or the sam power armor that they have in the coalition states which is in where like the united states are right now but in the lore of the world these were actually um kind of like copies or imitations of armor that uh, the military used before the rifts happened. Uh, so when I, I see this, I'm thinking, oh, great. So maybe there's like an African nation that kind of like how the coalition states were, were was uh, retrofitting technology. Maybe there's some nation states in Africa that are going to be building up stuff soon and we'll have like cities and um, we'll have like, like fortress cities and things like that and power armor and some new robots and stuff like that that will be really really freaking awesome right because humans made this um okay spoil alert that does not happen at all so and i just want to note that by now we're about let's see 23 pages in no africans 27 pages in still no black folks People of color know war. Okay, cool. Um, oh, we got a nice pastoral view there. Okay. Ah, okay. All right. So even in the the artwork and the concept stuff here, no black folks yet. Um, here's a nice. I'm presuming this is an interpretation of my art, probably by Kevin Long. It kind of seems like his style. Um, and they talk about the gods of the Nile here. Okay, all right, gods of the Nile. So let's get into this. And what do we have here? Huh, okay. All right, you know, it's their, it's their own take of things. I think I need to drink some tea. This section on the gods is just, it's just bad and really overtly simplistic. Um, they divided up the Egyptian gods into gods of light and gods of darkness, which I don't think was an actual thing um and here we have like you know what i got set real name set typhon tanis um i didn't think that was right back when i was a kid and now since i since it's like back in like 1993 i didn't feel that the, this was right and now in 2020 um i could find no like correlation of this particular name because i mean typhon i mean that's the son of gay and Tart uh, uh tartarus not set so anubis oh oh yes okay great um so i could spend my time talking about how they completely kind of made anubis anything that deals with like you know dying or passing on to the other side and this 
pantheon being as being depicted as like completely evil and really ahistorical. But I'm gonna skip that because now on page <clears throat> 41 of this 180, did I say? Whatever. In page 41 of this book, we we see our first uh, Africans. Um, and we have an undead person in the front. Okay. And our first living Africans are actually way in the back, back around here. Um, not really showing any, having any like agency or tools behind this also surprised white guy, but who's in this like safari getup. Um, which again, doesn't, one, this doesn't really match the world of Rifts. Two, it's just kind of like reinforcing the like stereotype of like, like African porters or like that they're just following the directions of the white guy right here. Uh, who's presumably in charge because he has the gun and he's up front and they're just standing around being shocked. Now granted, standing around looking shocked when an undead creature comes out, out of the ground. No, okay, yeah, that's that's reasonable. But there's just too much all at once, especially for this being the first picture of any kind of African in this whole book. Sure, you can have your own your own positions on material, but on the on the source material and your own interpretations. But at least, like, don't suck so bad at writing about it. I mean, it's just really horrible. Like, for example, Bess the Depraved. Okay, so one Bess in reality didn't actually look didn't actually work like this. Um, go in. Um, I'll actually link to an article. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Bess the Depraved, uh, which is depicted as this person right here, uh, didn't act like they're depicting in this at all. Um, okay, so here it says, Bess the Depraved is a disciple of evil and often associates with Seth. Set. He is hideous, bearded dwarf with a crown of feathers. Beth, Bess delights in torture and cannibalism. This is sad indeed, for at one time Bess fought alongside Ra, Ra and the gods of light, until he gave into his darker, more savage emotions. Okay, darker, more savage emotions? Really? Um, followed by insanity. He was recruited by Set and joined the pantheon of the gods of darkness. As such, he is usually associated with Set and his pantheons, but Bess associates with all a manner of dark forces, once a symbol of love, gaiety, and feasting, best now becomes a sim now symbolizes glut murder, gluttony, and cannibalism. Like that is like you can't 180 something like that without giving us more than just say like, oh he gave into his darker urges. Come on. This is this whole thing is just lazy as fuck. Okay, all right. So now that we've gotten the, you know, dark heavy, the like gods of darkness and evil out, I'm gonna sip my tea. Now I got the pantheons and Ra's god of light. Pantheons of Ra, god of, hold on, wait a minute. <sighs> there needs to be like a colon or a comma or something there, but okay. Uh, holy whitewashing Batman. Um, so this is the Pantheon. Um, this is Isis. I'm not sure who that is. That's Toth. That's Ra. And it just really just kind of goes downhill from here. I mean, we couldn't, I mean, they, they didn't even, they, they didn't even, even try. So like Isis, the all mother and warrior is described as a magnificent silver-haired beauty with cow-like horns and great feathered wings. Okay, um, don't really talk about Tony in here. Okay, all right, all right. And then we have Minion of the Gods, Phoenix Seat. I mean, this is just, mind you, page 63, the only, we still, the only, it's been 
20 pages. There's no visual representation. We haven't even talked about like African people or even like the geography yet. Um, and we're just getting thrown like, like these inhabitants and these creatures and no places to put them. This is really, really bad. And now we have the uh, Jin, and I think there's like no mention of like, you know, the uh, Arabic or Muslim uh, influence in the story and mythology around the Jin in this either, which is really, really interesting. And now we're like, ah, okay. All right. So this is. Okay, so when they talk about, like, African magic and how Af different African v groups view the supernatural, this, this is it. They don't talk about, they don't do, like, compare and contrast. They don't say, in this is believed among this people, or this belief is more common in South Africa, Southern Africa, or Western Africa. Nope, it's just these broad strokes. Even though they, the author says, you know, Africa's a big, complex place, not showing it. All right, so, um, let's see, more scenery. Um, yeah, so the African witch is just a undeniably evil, villainous character. Um, so... We get our first, you know, fully drawn black human on page 74, and it's an evil witch, or at least being associated with an evil witch. This is just crazy. Oh, yeah, and Sandy and Phobia's table. All right. And then we have the Medicine Man OCC, which is basically like a witch hunter and not really like an int like a very good or particularly potent one at that um the mechanics are all out of whack but i'm not even no i'm kind of like taking a bigger i'm trying to like pull myself back to like take a bigger look at this year and so like in this is like witch woman evil medicine man is a is a guy and he's good so it's like yay patriarchy all up in here enough of that um but, you know, this guy, this is actually like the first work of art in, in this book that to me just looks kind of cool. Um, so they get really kind of like specific, like pulling in like some things like, oh, uh, 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 the balubale over here, the mayembe horn of divining over here, and pulling things from all different cultures but you know you just said that Africa is a huge place and it is so tell us where these things come from or maybe tell show us several different examples like two examples from different parts of the of of, of the continent from different groups that do similar things you can you can do that it's not that hard um oh god yeah this guy okay this guy is in at least two or three other books. This is like their standard, like, hey, let's get a dude with a somewhat flat top showing up in it. And yeah. So, pretty, okay, so, and this whole thing on like, you know, ceremonial magic and secrets, um, on one hand, I did appreciate that at least they got the idea of like communal magic and like people working together to pull off like, you know, big magical effect, but at the same time, still overly general, one side, uh, one size fits all magic, tells a single story, forget it. And it's not even that, like, that great. It's uh, actually a lot of it is really just sad. Okay, and then what the hell is this doing in here? Okay, so the Mind Bleeder RCC just popped up. And they have this whole big paragraph. Mind you, we still haven't learned about any, like, specific, like, groups or nations or city-states that are in Africa right now. Um, but they have this, you know, two, three-block bulk on <laughs> what the New German Republic has been doing. And I'm like, why don't you just put that in tracks in the NGR book? It was the one that was right before this one. Come on, guys. 
Kenta. So there's all like Mind Bleeder, Psionix. And now we have, you know, the Necromancer. Okay, so at least considering the bigger story that they're trying to tell with like the Phoenix Empire, this somewhat makes sense to have here because there's a lot of necromancy going on, on in the Phoenix Empire. But at the same time, like, you know, they didn't even talk about like why you might want to let a player character be a necromancer. And then this dude, like maybe they studied necromancy to protect their village. Maybe they want to, they're trying to have a change of heart. But no, no, they're just like, okay, necromancy is evil. Here's how to play it. And here's all the, the magic for it. Okay. All right. So, um, now we are, after this, you know, necromancy stuff, we get to finally. All right. Rifts Africa. Highlights. Whew. I need to sip some tea now, because that we just went through 109 pages of Africa without Africans. Let's get down to it. Well, crap. Okay, so this just continues the kind of narration, rather the, the false narrative that Africans are fine, they don't try and change their environment, they don't try and make things better, they don't change. That they're still, like, idyllic and all that stuff and despite there being like you know magic and monsters and things like that you know people just stay in their villages and they don't do anything they don't try and make anything they don't try and there's no talk about building um rebuilding empires and nations and here i mean okay so there's just this list of african nations that one existed and many have survived the coming of the rifts and it's basically like an alphabetical uh, list from the the akamba to the zulu and like the names are cool thank you for copy and pasting but it doesn't say where they're from they don't doesn't say like which ones existed or not like, if I didn't know anything, I could think, think, like, you know, Zulus were over on, like, you know, the Somali coast or something like that. But no, we don't. Um, oh, yeah. And they have, there's, there's Pygmy again. Well, we'll get into that in a moment. Um, but the problem with stuff like this is that it, again, it tells that single story of Africa. It doesn't. It just says it paints things with a really wide brush. Like no one, no one would say that um, that uh, French, the French and the German are the, are the same. No one would say that you know the Spanish and the um, the uh, uh, Spaniards and Nordic folk are the same and paint them with the same brush that they're doing with this. Okay. All right, so actually, yeah. So here's a pre-riffs map and a post-riffs map, you know, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, okay, so for languages, they're talking about, about Northern Africa, right? Specifically, everything from about yay up. And it says 85% speak Euro, 80% gobbly, 65% Dragonese, 30% Spanish, 20% fairy. Um, why is like Arabic not even, even mentioned in this? It's like anything remotely relating to um, uh, uh, Islam or like the spread of Islam just like isn't here. And like 85% of North Africans after an apocalypse speaking Euro, which is like their kind of like amalgamation of like European nut languages, that just doesn't make, does not make sense at all. And oh yeah, again, when this talk to Lower Africa, first off, I've never, I don't think anyone even like uses that term, Lower Africa. They might say Sub Saharan Africa but not like lower Africa. And just so it's clear, you know, they say, you know, everything below the Sudan, Chad, and Niger will fall under the heading of lower, 
of Lower Africa. And again, the languages. 90% speaking Swahili. Okay. 75% speaking American English. Like, both those things just... Don't... 60% Euro? Like, virtually all humans in the in the lower and southern portions of Africa speak Swahili, the old trading language, and 75% speak American from the pre-rift days of English colonialism and American tourism. That is just some stank laziness. Um, take a look at this picture that I actually dug up just to see where people speak uh, Swahili today as, like, one of their major languages. Um, true, like, m many people do, but... Virtually everyone, 90% south of um, south of uh, Chad. Mm, no, no. Unless, now, if they were to say, if in this description they actually talked about, like, human cities, that would be great. Or, like, hu human trading cultures, if they said, like, okay, there was this inland trading empire boom that brought Swahili to all these other places during the Great Cataclysm, then I would be like, oh, you know what? That makes sense. That's great. But the way that they present it, it's like there's both nothing going on and these really broad brushes being struck. And this like 75% speak American from the pre-rift days of English colonialism and American tourism, um, that's just makes my head hurt so much. Ah, oh, hell, man. Okay, so. And now, of course, we get to how they so eloquently put it as the jungle people or the pygmy RCC. Now, um... Wait. I have to do this. Uh... In the Palladium system, there there are OCCs, which is like your class, and there's also some things that are people that have don't have an OCC, they have an RCC, or like a racial character class. That would be for things like dragons, and werewolves, and vampires, you know, the things that are like kind of fundamentally like their own little thing, okay? Um... First off, the term pygmy is just problematic as hell. They don't call themselves that. They've never called themselves that. So if you have people like the Twa or the or the Aka or the Mbuti who are who are just phenotypically shorter, smaller people, you know, they are still human beings. Okay? They should not be a separate RCC. Period. What the hell is wrong with these people? And how did I not burn this book when I was reading this when I was 12 years old? So they do uh, talk about uh, Lalabella, the um, stone churches in Ethiopia that were carved into the ground. Uh, but again, they don't really, they took, they really take kind of like African agency out of that again. And now they say that might be like a gateway to Wormwood underneath it. But again, nothing about the people that are currently there now. Um, I will say one, one thing I do appreciate that this had the great, the, the great rift Valley. Um, I was in a geography contest, um, in my, in eighth grade, shortly after reading this, and one of the things was to name a geographical feature that started with the G, and as I said, uh, Great Rift, Rift Valley, and my teacher said that I was making it up, that it didn't exist, but actually it, it did. <sighs> okay, so, um, going on to like East Africa here, and... A fair number of people, especially those along the ocean coastline and beyond East Africa, trade with visiting pirates and adventurers for some modern items. Others take high 
high-tech weapons and articles from defeated slavers and invaders. About 30% own an energy weapon or metal knives, a flashlight, sunglasses, or baseball cap, and other useful high-tech imports. So basically, they're saying that to the people who are in Africa, a metal knife is on the same level of high technology as lasers and that this is a kind of thing that kind of comes up a lot with like oh they don't know uh they don't do use uh t contemporary technology or metal and even though even in the description of the occs they talk about them having metallic possessions so like one it's just racist Africans have been making, working with metal for thousands upon thousands of years. Two, it's internally inconsistent. And three, it's just racist dog. All right, so this pretty much rounds out um, the... Uh, human occupied section of Africa um, and one of the things that I like appreciated about other Rifts books was that they took the time to like at least come up with like ley line plots and things like that and like um, they would have maps of places so I could see like oh yeah so like connecting Stonehenge to this place to this place awesome nothing of that for all of Africa not even in Egypt they could have just connected some dots in Egypt and they didn't do it um, there's really quick, at least, okay, so at least they were self-aware. Some quick, basic animal stats. We still, other than the, uh, yeah, yeah, some quick, basic animal stats. Much better than the humans here. Um, we've got some of the monsters of Africa. Some of these are reference to like um, things that existed in prehistorical periods. Okay. Um, then the, there's these guys, the uh, the uh, uh, Butifas. Um, I don't know if they just spelled it wrong or really, really hurt, really, really misinterpreted what they were seeing, what what they were hearing, or misremembered something, but. I researched this. I could not find anything. I could not find any creature um, in in like in like African folklore or anything like that that had this name. Um, aside from the only like uh, reference that. No, no, sorry, that was actually for another creature that was, that, that was earlier. So, like, yeah, I have no idea what this is. Um, just, if you try and research this yourself, be careful, because if you do search for this, um, you might get some um, uh, unsavory results that have nothing to do with African mythology or anything like that. Okay, so, um, okay, demonic cannibals. Um... This is just the most generic name ever. Yeah, there is, you know, cannibals and people who, like, take people and children in African folklore, but they do have names. Make it something not this. Okay, now we have the Phoenix Empire, which is apparently this big, you know, demonic empire. And oh my goodness, they can walk, talk about countries. Look! Uh, all of this information about locations and even citizen representation. Wow, they even have it marked out. But are there people of color here? Mm, not really, because look at the guy who's the head of this empire. He looks like a Pharaoh Ramaset. Looks like a, you know, used Ford salesman. I mean, I know that that that's the human form he takes, that he's actually this, you know, Chinese dragon that's in Egypt, but whatever. And so that's where we're at. Now at the very end, we have the Gathering of Heroes. 
Um, these are non-player characters of note. Um, we have Katrina's son, who's really um, Isis, who doesn't really recall anything. Um, she doesn't. She isn't really described other than being a beautiful warrior woman, which is really sad. And then we have finally have stats for Aaron Tarn. Okay. And here we have Sir Winslow Thorpe, uh, who is apparently a might be a ancestor of James Thorpe, um, who's a uh, who's a Native American Olympic athlete. Um, and we have Victor Laszlo. These are all people who are from like kind of like the 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 meta story and lore from the. Uh, from the rest of the series, we have Lo Fung the Dragon, Fang Lo, a Bikki the Defiant, and whoa, wait a minute, whoa, let me go back here. Are there any black folks? No black NPCs? Of course they're not, because it doesn't, they don't care. They don't. Black people are immaterial in this world. They are. They are background setting. They are as important as the grass and the trees in this book. And that's why this book... I mean, they even talk about Merlin and New Camelot from England who are there. Who are in... in Africa. But, you know, nothing about, you know, the Zulu who he mentioned in the very first uh, uh, section or any... No one, none of the North Africans, nothing. And then that is it. And we have some experience charts. So this book is terrible on a lot of reasons. One, it's racist. Two, it takes out, it, it's racist because it takes out all the agency of um, Africans and uh, both really Africans of any type. Uh, three, its setup is terrible. You have, you don't talk about the place that it's supposed to be talking about until you're 108 pages in. Um, you don't have any NPCs that are like, you don't have any like uh, 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 background characters or NPCs of note that are actually from the place that you're talking about. Um, you, it contradicts itself Third, by saying that, well, Africa is a really big, complex place, but then not actually showing any of that complexity. Um, and it mauls the gods of Egypt. Um, this really just sucks. It's like Palladium, you're really showing your true colors. And I thought I couldn't really get much more upset with Palladium before starting this. But, you know, now I'm just kind of like go out and buy the new uh, the new Robotech RPG from SMG Games just so I don't even have to even think about using Robotech from Palladium anymore. So this is going to go right into the dustbin of history.